Welcome to ASVAB Tutoring. In this lesson, we will be covering decimals. Over the course of this video, we will be going over how to convert fractions to decimals, decimal addition, decimal subtraction, decimal multiplication, and decimal division. Let's learn how to convert fractions to decimals. In this example, we have three fifths. And the easiest way to turn a fraction into a decimal is by trying to turn the denominator into 100. And so this becomes very easy because 100 is divisible by 5. Because 5 times 20 gives us 100. However, because of the rules of equivalent fractions, whatever we do to the bottom, we have to also do to the top. So we're also going to multiply the numerator, which is 3, by 20. And when we do that, we get 60 over 100. And so now it becomes very easy to turn this fraction into a decimal. So we have 60, and at the end of every single whole number, there is this invisible decimal point, and because there's two zeros after the one in the denominator, we move that invisible decimal point two places to the left, so one and two. So our decimal place ends up being here, and our final decimal ends up being 0 0.60, which is also 0 0.6. In this next example, we have 1 eighth. And so when we look at our denominator, we see that 8 is a number that can't be multiplied with another number to get 100, because 100 is simply not divisible by 8. So when we have this problem, what we can actually do is do long division to get our answer. So let's divide 1 by 8. And so we realize that 1 is far less than 8, so there's no number that we can multiply 8 by to get closest to 1. So what we do is we take the help of a decimal point. So when we put down a decimal point here, we can actually allow ourselves to put down a 0 next to the 1. And so our 1 turns into a 10. And so now we can start dividing. And so we know that 8 times 1 actually gets us 8, and 8 is the closest that we can get to 10 without going far beyond it. So we put down 8 and we subtract the two numbers to get 2. And so again, we have this problem where 2 is far less than 8. So we need to take the help of our fellow decimal point. And so this decimal point allows us to put, again, a 0 next to the 2 to turn it into a 20. And so now that we have 20, we know that 8 times 2 gets us 16. And 16 is the closest that we can get to 20 without going far beyond it. And so when we subtract 20 minus 16, we get 4. And so now, again, 4 is far less than 8, so we need to use the help of our decimal point and put a 0 next to the 4 to turn it into 40. And now, this is a great thing because 40 is divisible by 8, because 8 times 5 gives us 40. And so now we can put down the 40 here and subtract the two 40s to get 0. And so when we have a 0 remainder, we know that our problem is done. So 1 eighth actually turns out to be 0 0.125. In this example, we have 1 20th. And so we will use the same exact method that we used in our first example. We have to turn our denominator into 100. And we can do that by multiplying 20 times 5. And according to our rule of equivalent fractions, whatever we do to the bottom, we're also going to do to the top. So we'll multiply the numerator by 5 as well, so 1 times 5. And so our final decimal ends up being 5 over 100. And so now this fraction is much easier to turn into a decimal because we know that 5, as a whole number, there is an invisible decimal point at the end of it, right here. And when we have two zeros after the 1 in our denominator, we actually move that invisible decimal point two places to the left. And so 1, 2. And so our decimal point ends up being here. And we see an empty space right here, so an empty place. So we substitute that place with a 0. So our final decimal point actually ends up being 0 0.05. In this last example, we have 45 over 10. And in order to solve this, we'll use the same exact method and try to turn our denominator into 100. And our denominator in this case is 10. And that makes it so much easier because we know that 10 times 10 gives us 100. And so whatever we do to the bottom, we must also do to the top. 
So we'll multiply 45, our numerator, by 10 as well. And so our equivalent fraction actually ends up being 450 over 100. And so now this fraction is much easier to convert into a decimal. And so we know that 450 has an invisible decimal point at the end of it. And because there are two zeros after the one in our denominator, we must move that decimal point two places to the left. So our decimal point actually ends up being in between the four and the five. And so our final decimal is 4.5. Now it's time for some practice problems. For this problem, what I want you to do is pause this video and try to do the problem on your own in a notebook and see if you can get the correct answer. For this next practice problem, please once again pause your video and do this problem in a notebook and see if you can get the correct answer. For this next practice problem, once again, take a moment and pause the video to see if you can solve it on your own and get the correct answer. For this last practice problem, please pause the video and go over it on your own to see if you can get the same answer as I did. Let's learn how to add up decimals. In this example, we have 13.59 plus 7.02 plus 8.375. In order to do this correctly, we'll do long division and make sure that all our decimal points are lined up underneath each other to ensure that all the place values are equally done. So in order to get started, we'll do 13.59, then we have 7.02, and then finally we have 8.375. And so notice how all the decimal points are lined up underneath each other. So that's how we know we can get started with adding. So in our thousandths place, we only have a five. So we'll put down a five. In our hundredths place, we have nine plus two, which gives us 11. 11 plus seven, which gives us 18. So we'll put down the eight and carry over the one to the, to the tenths place and then add. So we have one plus five to give us six and six plus three to give us nine. And so then we have a, a decimal point right here. So we'll put in a decimal point. And then we have in our ones place, three plus seven to give us 10 and 10 plus eight to give us 18. So we'll put down the eight and carry over the one. And now in our tens place, we have one plus one to give us two. So our final answer ends up being 28.985. In this next example, we are being told to add up 315.79, 120, and 0 0.752. So in order to do this correctly, we'll do long division once again, and make sure that our decimal points are lined up underneath each other. So let's get started. We have 315.79, and then we have 120, and we know that 120 has this invisible decimal point at the end of it, and we can just put two zeros here to help us out, and so that we don't get confused. And then we have 0 0.752. And so notice how all of my decimal points are lined up in the same place, and so we can start adding. So in our thousandths place, we only have a two, so we'll put down a two. In our hundredths place, we have nine plus five, which gives us 14, and we put down the four and we carry over the one to the tenths place and we add up one plus seven plus seven to give us 15. And so we put down the five and carry over the one to our ones place, and then we have one plus five in the ones place to get six, and then in our tens place, we have one plus two to give us three. And then finally, in our hundreds place, we have three plus one to give us four. And finally, we know that our decimal point goes in between the ones place and the tenths place. So we put it in between the six and the five. And so our final answer actually ends up being 436.542.
Now it's time for some practice problems. For this problem, please pause the video and see if you can do this on your own and get the same answer as I did. For this next practice problem, please once again pause the video and try to do it on your own and see if you can get the same answer as I did. Let's move on to subtracting decimals. Subtracting decimals is exactly the same as subtracting whole numbers, however the only difference is the decimal point. So let's do this problem together. We have 7.89 minus 3.25. So let's start off in the hundredths place. So in the hundredths place we have 9 minus 5, which gives us 4. And then in the tenths place we have 8 minus 2, which gives us 6. And then in the ones place, we have seven minus three, which gives us four. And then we, of course, we know that there is a decimal point in between the ones place and the tenths place. So we put that in between the four and the six to get 4.64. In this next example, we are being told to solve 789.89 minus 79.35. So let's start off once again in the hundredths place. So in the hundredths place, we have nine minus five, which gives us four. And then in the tenths place, we have eight minus three, which gives us five. And then in the ones place, we have nine minus nine, which gives us a zero. And then in the tenths place, we have eight minus seven, which gives us a one. And then finally, in the hundredths place, we only have a seven. So we put down a seven. And so we know the decimal point goes in between the ones place right here and the tenths place right here. So our decimal point goes in between the zero and the five. So our final answer ends up being 710.54. In this last example here, we are being told to subtract 70,025 minus 239.50. So now we have a whole number and a decimal number, but we can still do this because we know that 70,025 has a decimal point at the end of it, and we can put as many zeros as we want to substitute in for the tenths place and the hundredths place. So now we can subtract. So let's get started. In the hundredths place, we have zero minus zero, so we get a zero. In the tenths place, we have 0 minus 5, which is a problem because 0 is less than 5, so we need to borrow a 10 from the 1's place, so this 5 will become a 4, and this 0 will become a 10. And so 10 minus 5 is 5, and then we have in the 1's place 4 minus 9, which is a problem because 4 is less than 9, so we need to borrow a 10 from the 10's place, and so this 2 becomes a 1, and this four becomes a 14. And so 14 minus nine gives us five. And then in the tens place, we have one minus three and one is less than three. So we need to borrow something from the hundreds place to make this one a bigger number. But the problem is there is nothing in the hundredth place or the thousands place, but there is something in the 10 thousands place, which is a seven. So this seven will borrow it. And so this becomes a six and we'll borrow that 10 to give it to the thousands place. And so this zero actually becomes a 10. And then now we have enough in the thousands place to make the hundreds place a bigger number. So this we can borrow a 10 from the thousands place. So this 10 will become a nine and this zero will become a 10. And so now we have enough to turn this one that we were looking at into a bigger number. So we can borrow that 10 from the hundreds place and it will become a nine. And that one that we had previously will become a 10. So following along in our tens place, we have 10 minus three, which gives us seven. And then in our hundreds place, we have nine minus two, which gives us seven once again. And then in our thousands place, we have nine because there's nothing else. And then we have that remaining six in our 10 thousands place. And now we're almost done, but we can't forget the decimal point. So our decimal point always goes between the ones place and the tenths place. So in this case, our decimal point will go between the two fives. 
So our final answer ends up being 69,775.50. Now it's time for some practice problems. For this problem, please pause your video and try to do it on your own, and then see if you can get the correct answer. For this next practice problem, please once again pause your video and see if you can get the same answer as I did. For this final practice problem, once again pause your video and do this problem in a notebook to see if you can get the correct answer. Let's move on to multiplying decimals. In this example, we are being told to multiply 3.25 times 8. So multiplying decimals are the exact same thing as multiplying whole numbers, however there's only a decimal point involved. So we will take the second number and multiply it with every single digit of the first number. So let's get started. We have eight times five to give us 40. So we put down the zero and carry over the remaining four. And we add that to eight times two, which is 16. And so 16 plus four gives us 20. So we put down the zero and we carry over the remaining two. And then we have eight times three to give us 24. And we, when we add the two to it, we get 26. Now we are almost done with this problem, but now we need to figure out where to put the decimal point. So we do that by counting up all the decimal places in both numbers. So in the first number, 3.25, we see that the decimal point is after two places. So we have one, two, two places. In the second number, however, eight, there is no decimal place. So in total, the decimal point should be placed after two decimal places. So we start from the right of our final answer and we work our way to two decimal places to the left. So we put our decimal one, two, and so it ends up being in between the six and the zero. So our final answer actually ends up being 26.00, which is basically the same thing as 26. Next example here, we're being told to multiply 3.05 times 0 0.0052. So in order to do this, we'll multiply it like normal whole numbers, and then we'll put in the decimal point in later. So we'll start off with the 10 thousandths place in the second number and multiply it with every single digit of the first number. So we multiply two times five to get 10. So we put down the zero and we carry over the one. And so two times zero gets us zero and zero plus one gets us one. Then we multiply two times three to get us six. And so now we're done with the 10 thousandths place. So we'll put a zero underneath the zero over here and we'll erase all the numbers up at the top to avoid any sorts of confusion. And so now moving on to the thousandths place, which is the five, we'll multiply five times five to get 25. We'll put down the five and carry over the remaining two. Five times zero gives us zero and zero plus two gives us two. And so now lastly, we have five times three to get us 15. And so now we're done with the 10 thousandths place and the thousandths place. So we'll put down a zero in the two places right here. And then we're moving on to the hundredths place. And so now the hundredths place has a zero. So that means that all of the products will be zero. So zero times five is zero, zero times zero is zero, and zero times three is zero. So zero, zero, zero. And so now we're done with the hundredths place, and now we can move on to the tenths place. So our tenths place, so let's put the zeros down, and now we know that in our tenths place we have a zero again, and so zero times five is zero, zero times zero is zero, and zero times three is zero. And so the three zeros go down. And so now we're done multiplying all of the numbers. And now what we have to do is add, just like in normal multiplication with whole numbers. So in the first column, we have just a bunch of zeros. So we'll put down a zero. In the second column, we have one plus five to get us six. And then next column, we have six plus two to get us eight. The next column, we have five. And then in the next column, we have a one. 
and the final column we have a zero. And so now we've got this answer, but we need to figure out where to put the decimal point. So we find that out by adding up all the decimal places of both of the numbers that are being multiplied. So in the first number, we have the decimal place after two, two places. So we have one, two. So two places over here. And in the second number, we have the decimal point after one, two, three, four, four places. So in the first number, we have two places. And then the second number, we have four places. So in total, that makes six decimal places. So we have to start from the right of our final answer and move our decimal point six places to the left. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. And so our decimal point ends up going right in front of that zero. So our final answer actually ends up being um, 0 0.015860, which is basically the same thing as 0 0.01586. Now it's time for some practice problems. For this problem, I would like you to pause your video and see if you can do this on your own and get the correct answer. For this last practice problem, please once again pause your video to see if you can do this on your own and get the same answer as I did. Let's move on to dividing decimals. In this example, we're being told to divide 37.5 by 5. Dividing decimals is very similar to dividing whole numbers. All we have to do at the end is know where to put in the decimal point. But to get started, we first look at the dividend and see the first digit and see if there is a number that can be multiplied by 5 to get closest to it. So our dividend, 37.5, the first digit is 3. But the problem is 3 is far less than 5, and so there is no number that can be multiplied by 5 to get closest to 3. So we'll actually look at the first and the second digit of the dividend combined. So instead of looking at 3, we're going to be looking at 37. So we know that 5 times 7 actually gets us 35, and 35 is pretty close to 37, and it's the closest that we can get without going beyond 37. So we'll subtract these two numbers to get 2. And now we have a problem because in this remainder, 5 is far greater than 2. So we need the help of the next digit of our dividend, which is 5 right here. So we'll bring it down next to the 2 to get 25. And so now we know that 5 times 5 actually gets us 25. So we'll put down the 25 here and subtract to get 0. Now we would be done if there wasn't a decimal point, but there is. So now we have to figure out where to put the decimal point in our quotient. So we do that by looking at our dividend. So in our dividend, which is 37.5, we see that the decimal point is placed after one place value. So the same thing will happen with our quotient. We'll place the decimal point after one place value. So from the right, we'll start and we'll count one place value. So we'll start from here. 1. So our decimal point will go in between the 7 and the 5. So our final answer actually ends up being 7.5. In this next example here, we are being told to divide 8.5 by 0 0.5. One thing to notice is that both the divisor and the dividend are decimal numbers. However, the easiest way to do this is to turn the divisor into a whole number. So our divisor is 0 0.5. And so the way to turn this decimal number into a whole number is by simply moving the decimal place to the right. And so in order to turn this 0 0.5 into a whole number, we can simply move this decimal point one place to the right to turn it into 5. So our 0 0.5 is now a 5. And when we do this, we must also take the decimal point in our dividend and move it that many places to the right as well. So since we moved the decimal point in 0 0.5 one place to the right, we'll move this decimal point one place to the right as well. So now our new division equation actually ends up being 
85 divided by 5. And so now this becomes easy because we can just solve. So looking at the first digit of our dividend, we see an 8. And we know that 5 times 1 actually gets us 5, which is the closest we can get to 8 without going far beyond it. So 8 minus 5 gets us a 3. And so now 3 is far less than 5, so we need to borrow the help of the following digit of our dividend, which is 5. So we bring down the 5 and we get 35. And we know that 35 is divisible by 5 because 5 times 7 gets us 35. And so 35 minus 35 gets us 0. So our final answer actually ends up being 17. So in this problem here, we are being told to divide 3.66 by 1.2. And both the divisor and dividend are decimal numbers. So we have to turn our divisor into a whole number. And we do that by moving the decimal point one place to the right. So our number goes from 1.2 to now being 12. And because we've done that to the divisor, we need to do the exact same thing to our dividend. And so we move our decimal point in our dividend one place to the right as well. So our new decimal equation becomes 36.6 divided by 12. And so now we can start dividing. We realize that the first digit, 3, is too small um, to be divided by 12. And so we start looking at the two digits combined, so the first and the second digit combined. So we're looking at 36. And we know that 3 times 12 actually gives us 36. So we put down 3, and then we subtract the two 36s to get 0. And now we still have... Um, numbers left and we realize that 0 is too small and the only number that we can multiply by 12 to get 0 is 0. And so we put down 0 and subtract the 2 and then we bring down the 6 and we realize that it is still too small. And so now we need to get the help of our decimal point because of the fact that we don't want anything left over and we want an exact answer. So when we put the decimal point, we're actually allowing ourselves to put down a 0 next to the 6, and now we have 60. And we know that 12 times 5 actually gives us 60, so we put down the 60, and we subtract the 2 to get 0. And now we realize that there is a decimal point in our answer, but this is due to the fact that we needed help getting an exact answer for our division problem. However, we're still forgetting about the fact that there is still a decimal point within our dividend, right? It's a 13, it's um, between the two sixes. And so we realize that the decimal point in our dividend is one place value after. So it's one place value to the left. So because of that, we also have to move the decimal point in our quotient one place value to the left, just like it. So our final answer actually ends up being 3.05. Now it's time for some practice problems. For this problem, please pause this video and see if you can do this problem on your own and get the correct answer. For this next practice problem, once again pause the video to see if you can get the correct answer on your own. For the final practice problem, once again pause the video and see if you can get the correct answer as I did.